Today's D&D Academia is all about the large ooze, the gelatinous cube. This creature can be found in the Monster Manual. The gelatinous cube has a challenge rating of 2, armor class of 6, and 84 hit points. It has a speed of 15 feet and a blind sight of 60 feet with a passive perception of 8. Proficiency bonus of plus 2. No known languages, and it does not require sleep. As for condition immunities, blinded, charmed, deafened, exhaustion, frightened, and prone. The cube takes up its entire space. Other creatures can enter the space, but a creature that does so is subjected to the cube's engulf and has disadvantage on the saving throw. Creatures inside the cube can be seen but have total cover. A creature within five feet of the cube can take an action to pull a creature or object out of the cube. Doing so requires a successful DC-12 strength check, and the creature making the attempt takes 3d6 acid damage. If you and your enemies are trying to flee from a gelatinous cube, doing a hold person, hold monster, or polymorph spell to slow them down is a fun way to let the cube get them. The cube can hold only one large creature, or up to four medium or smaller creatures inside it at a time. The cube is transparent, meaning even when it is in plain sight, it takes a successful DC-15 wisdom perception check to spot a cube that has neither moved nor attacked. A creature that tries to enter the cube's space while unaware of the cube is surprised by the cube. This is why gelatinous cubes are so perfect for dungeons and trap rooms. Also, you could have some fun confusing your players. Perhaps they are in a long corridor, and something has been following them. With a perception check, they can tell that something is floating or moving behind them, and perhaps they assume it's a ghost or some other creature. Upon closer inspection, they now realize it was just the remains of something floating in a gelatinous cube. But now, it is too late to escape. Here are the cube's actions. It has a pseudopod. This is a melee weapon attack, with a plus four to hit, and a reach of five feet on one creature. The hit deals 3d6 acid damage. With the engulf action, the cube moves up to its speed. While doing so, it can enter a large or smaller creature's spaces. Whenever the cube enters a creature's space, the creature must make a DC-12 dexterity saving throw. On a successful save, the creature can choose to be pushed five feet back or to the side of the cube. A creature that chooses not to be pushed suffers the consequences of a failed saving throw. On a failed save, the cube enters the creature's space, and the creature takes 3d6 acid damage and is engulfed. The engulfed creature can't breathe and is restrained, and takes 6d6 acid damage at the start of each of the cube's turns. When the cube moves, the engulfed creature moves with it. An engulfed creature can try to escape by taking an action to make a DC-12 strength check. On a success, the creature escapes and enters a space of its choice within five feet of the cube. Here is the lore of the gelatinous cube. They scour dungeon passages in silent, predictable patterns, leaving perfectly clean paths in their wake. They consume living tissue while leaving bones and other materials undissolved. A gelatinous cube is all but transparent, making it hard to spot until it attacks. A cube that is well-fed can be easier to spot, since its victims, bones, coins, and other objects can be seen suspended inside the creature. An ooze kills its prey slowly. Some varieties, such as black puddings and gelatinous cubes, engulf creatures to prevent escape. The only upside of this torturous death is that a victim's comrades can come to the rescue before it's too late. Since not every ooze digests every type of substance, some have coins, metal, gear, bones, and other debris suspended within their quivering bodies. A slain ooze can be a rich source of treasure for its killers. 
Although an ooze lacks the intelligence to ally itself with other creatures, others that understand an ooze's need to feed might lure it into a location where it can be of use to them. Clever monsters keep oozes around to defend passageways or consume refuse. Likewise, an ooze can be enticed into a pit trap where its captors feed it often enough to prevent it from coming after them. Crafty creatures place torches and flaming braziers in strategic areas to dissuade an ooze from leaving a particular tunnel or room. One scenario that is always entertaining for the DM, but annoying to the players, is a trapdoor that drops a gelatinous cube onto the party. Maybe there's even a particular magic item that the group is trying to acquire that is within a gelatinous cube. According to the Demonomicon of Igualiv and other sources, oozes are scattered fragments of offspring of the demon lord Jubilex. Whether this is true or not, the Faceless Lord is one of the few beings that can control oozes and imbue them with a modicum of intelligence. Most of the time, oozes have no sense of tactics of self-preservation. They are direct and predictable, attacking and eating without cunning. Under the control of Jubilex, they exhibit glimmers of sentience and malevolent intent. This has been the D&D Academia episode, all about the gelatinous cube. I hope you enjoyed, and will use this creature going forward in your own games. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out the other D&D Academia videos, and if there's anything you'd like to see, always add your suggestions in the comments.